Welcome to Hanover Park High School for the North Jersey High School Game of the Week. The Hanover Park Hornets and the Dover Tigers going at it. I did not wear my Pat Summerall mask, and the coach here did not take on the John Madden persona. But happy Halloween, everybody. Steve Tober with Dale Abling. And coach, good ball game in the makings here this afternoon. 5-1 and one Hanover Park hosting 4-2 and two Dover in a battle of two Iron Hills Hills Division teams. Last year, Hanover Park won the game 7-6 but did not qualify for the playoffs. Dover did. This year with the expanded field, it gives a little different perspective. It certainly does, and don't forget, it's Halloween, so any tricks could occur. Uh, two years ago, this game was a 58-9 to or 59-8 to score, so I have no idea what's going to happen here on Halloween. But those power points are very important, certainly to Dover. Two teams here today, Coach. Uh, being a former head mentor at Hackensack and Fort Lee High School, you know offensive schemes. Both these teams run the wing tee, however, different attacks. Dover run oriented. Hanover Park with good play action passing. Most definitely. Uh, this is the kind of game I love to see because North Jersey football is renowned for the wing tee. Now Hanover Park has thrown 11 touchdown passes almost 500 yards. Uh, on the other hand we have Dover who is ground oriented and as you know a history of running the ring tee real real well. Dover known for their speed backs over the years. You can go back to Jesse Williams, Bruce Ryans, Mike Evans, many names come off the tongue. However, linemen are key, and they have a very good one, number 72, an offensive guard. He's also an inside linebacker, number 72, Ruben Doster. Big boy, 6'2", 230 pounds, uh, summer division one, double A teams are looking at him. I think he's a real fine prospect and probably be an outstanding college as well as high school player. 82 tackles on a year, averages 13 a game. Now from a Hanover Park perspective, John Liberato, their fourth year coach, has done a tremendous job in turning around this program. Program. They have a nice running attack in the wing tee, but they also pass the ball very nicely, led by their fine receiver, number 13, Paul Block. Who has six touchdown receptions, uh, is a leading receiver on the team. Not a real big boy, but an outstanding athlete and a real key to stop for Dover. Now, Dale, the significance of this game, Hanover Park is probably in the playoffs. They virtually secured their berth at 5-1. and one. Dover at 4-2 and two, probably needs one win in the next two weeks. But it's a big game psychologically for both teams in this Iron Hills Conference Hills division. Well, it's a traditional game, first of all. They've been playing for a lot of years, and Dover, over the years, has dominated this series. So very important for them to get a win today or against Parsippany to get into the state playoffs. Well, if you've done your trick-or-treating, sit back in your living room chair, enjoy the football. Next, we have Jimmy Cavallo with both head coaches. We're getting near kickoff on your North Jersey Game of the Week. Welcome back to Hanover Park High School for our game of the week. Iron Hills Conference matchup. Our two head coaches have stopped by. We'll start with the Dover Tigers head coach, Ken Schilling. And uh, coach, as things have gone for Dover in 1998, a little shaky lately. Come out 3-0, but lost 2 of 3. Where is your team at right now? Uh, the one thing that we had to go back and correct was the discipline within our program. Uh, we felt over the past week and a half to two weeks we've been able to do that. Uh, we have pride back in the program and a commitment uh, to the excellence of Dover football. You know, out of the wing tee offense you guys run, you like to play power football, run the football. Junior, JV QB is in there, Gene Sacola. Will you guys look to throw the ball a little more, try and open this offense up? I mean, we're, we're looking to run the football. That's the bottom line. Uh, you know, we, we've, we have confidence in him. He's thrown the ball well in the JV level. He came back and won the game last week in the last 27 seconds. So, yeah, we do have confidence with him throwing, but the bottom line is we want to run. You know, historically, Dover has had their way in, in this game. Last year, you come off the 7-6 loss uh, to Hanover Park. How much are your seniors thinking about that loss? That was an emotional loss for us last year. Uh, you know, John did a great job in the game. Uh, it, weather conditions really, I mean, it, it was tough weather conditions, but uh, you can't blame that on, on, you know, on winning and losing a game. Uh, they became conference champions. We didn't. Uh, we went to the comp we went to the states and they didn't. So I mean, there's there's things both uh, that we're looking at, and uh, you know, when people talk about uh, are you upset about? It? Of course we are. It's a loss. Anytime we lose, we're upset. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. Let's bring in the head coach at Hanover Park, John Liberato. And uh, Coach, let's face it, 1998 has been 
a good time for you guys at Hanover Park. Coming at five and one, the one blemish last week. So you're coming off the loss. You expect your guys to bounce back? Well, we take it one game at a time, and we just expect our kids to perform to the best of their God-given abilities. You know, when you look at Hanover Park last year, you guys go seven and two. You're one of the reasons why probably these playoffs have been expanded. You guys did not make it in, but I know as a head coach, John, you're probably not taking any chances looking to win out every game. No, we, we approach every game uh, with the with the idea that we're going to go out there and play our hardest and we're going to try and win every game. Uh, we don't put any emphasis on the playoffs or anything like that. We take it one game at a time. How about the history of these two teams? You know Dover has had the edge in the overall series. You know Dover is going to come in a confident team. Oh, without a doubt. You know, we're always looking for a competitive game between Dover and Hanover Park. And, and again, we're just going to try and do our best and let the uh, chips fall where they may. Good luck, Coach. Thank you very much. That's the coach of the Hornets right there. They are looking for their sixth win in 1998 as they edge oh so closer to the state playoffs. We are just moments away. We'll take a quick break right here on Cablevision Game of the Week. High school football is coming up next. Stay with us. Hanover Park High School, Steve Tober, Dale Abling, Jimmy Cavallo, and statistician Bill Bromberg getting set for this big Iron Hills Conference Hills Division showdown between 4 and 2 Dover and 5 and 1 Hanover Park. Looking at the series history between these two teams going back to the late 70s, Dover has a commanding advantage at 18 and 4. However, Hanover Park last year in a torrential downpour came through with a 7-6 victory. A very controversial win, not in the decision of that game, but in the fact that Hanover Park beat Dover, did not make the playoffs. Dover made the playoffs in Group 2. Now with an expanded field, both teams should get in. The last Dover victory, 59-8, resounding win back in 1996. And Dover had won seven straight in the series, including a playoff victory in 1991. In fact, they won every game in the 1980s. And Dale Abling, former head coach at Hackensack and Fort Lee. What are the keys to the game for Dover against these Hanover Park Hornets? Well, first of all, as we said in the pregame, uh, Hanover Park is an excellent passing team, so uh, it's very important that Dover have discipline on D and stop both the pass and the run. Secondly, I think they've got to use the pass more today and open up their game and make the ball move up and down the field. Dover has thrown only 15 passes all year, Dale Abling. They're going to have to pass the ball here today more, and they had their JV quarterback, Gene Sokola, going at it this afternoon. Puts a little more pressure on the Dover offense. For Hanover Park coming in at 5-1, and one, they've mixed the pass and run so effectively, but what do they have to do to slow down the Dover Tigers? Well, as we said in the pregame, uh, Dover's known for fast backs. They've got to just stay home, do the job, stay and key all three running backs. I think that's the key to stop the running game. They've also, of course, got to do what they finished the last six games doing, pass and run effectively. Great game on tap here this afternoon. Can the Dover Tigers pull the upset? They've lost two of their last three. Hanover Park coming off a 21-7 loss to Parsippany Hills. They've been a juggernaut defensively, averaging only eight points a game, giving up from the first team defense. We're getting close to kickoff. We'll be back with more right after this. Back at Hanover Park High School, Steve Tuber, Dale Abling, Jimmy Cavallo getting set for a kickoff of today's Iron Hills Conference Hills Division showdown between the Dover Tigers and the Hanover Park Hornets on a gorgeous Halloween afternoon. And hope you're enjoying this on Cablevision, our North Jersey High School football game of the week. We bring you the best from Morris, Sussex, Passaic, and Bergen. And looking at the officials for today's football game, a veteran crew headed by the referee John Rattano. Terry Fisher is the umpire. The linesman is Winnie Cornwright. The line judge is Bill Pierce Sr. The back judge is Bill Pierce Jr. And the clock operator is Bob DeRico. And Dale Abling, 
What a perfect day for high school football. Great atmosphere here in East Hanover at Hanover Park High School. Two teams well familiar with both of each other after last year's 7-6 nail-biter. Hopefully we have more of that on top here this afternoon. I certainly hope so. We don't want another 58-9 game like the year before. Looking across the field, Steve, I'm looking over at those yellow, uh, those orange pumpkins on the top of Dover helmets. That's what we used to call a guy. <laughs> whenever a guy had over a seven and a half size, we called that helmet a pumpkin. Uh, it's Halloween. I, I really suspect that the, with the wing tee, we're going to see a lot of tricks today. Well, looking at some of the results so far this year for these teams, they both come in with six games under their belt. And the Dover Tigers at four and two began the season on September 18th with a 41-15 win over Mount Olive. Then they beat Wheat Quay at 20 to nothing, knocked off Summit 21 to 6. Then they picked up their first loss of the season at Parsippany Hills, 36 to 15, a setback for the Dover Tigers. Then it will be setback number two to West Essex, 24 to 6 at home, and that perhaps the most upsetting loss for Dover. You lose at home to a West Essex, another wing tee attack, 24 6. It shows you were knocked off the ball at the line of scrimmage. That's something that concerns Kent Schilling, Dale Abling because they can't lose the game at the line of scrimmage. No, well, that's for sure. you got to win the, hor the hor with the horses up front. But they did bounce back the next week and beat North Hill, so I think they're back on the winning way. And as we said before the game, you must win today or next Stop week. Get some power points. Game. Very important Stop game today. That's a look at Danny Ippolito, one of the assistant the coaches the for the Dover ball. Tigers. There's Kent Schilling with his back to us. The 29-year-old head coach for the Dover Tigers as the captains meet at midfield. There's a good ground level shot of Greg Rowe. And it's just a picture perfect day. There's Kevin Costabos, number 51, with the outstanding lineman and a tri captain for Hanover Park. The Hornets dressed in their home black with a gold trim. Dover with the white jerseys and black pants in the orange trim. John Liberato of Hanover Park in his fourth season. A new Providence High School graduate played under Frank Batone, a legendary wing tee coach. And Kent Schilling played at Moorestown High School in South Jersey and later under Eric Hamilton in the wing tee at Trenton State. Jimmy Cavallo, the third member of our broadcast team, is down on the field with the report. Jimmy C. Hey, Steve, you know, just a moment ago, I had a chance to speak to Dover head coach Ken Schilling. I said, Coach, what was the last thing that you told your team before you came out of the locker room? He said, Guys, if anything, let's come out of this game with respect. I have a feeling, too, Ken Schilling was thinking about last year's 7-6 loss because he also told his guys, let's play 48 minutes of football. He said, Fellas, this is going to be a hard knocks football game. You get knocked down, get back up. 48 minutes is our emphasis. I think Ken Schilling is ready to go, to say the least. Back up Yes. Thank you, Jimmy C. And Dover won the toss, has deferred, and they will kick off. And that's an interesting bit of strategy, Dale Abling, deciding to kick off, get on defense, maybe get some hits in early. Look up there. It's a real bright day. You might want that sun with you in the second half. Hanover Park at 5-1 and one has had a tremendous start. Right now, let's take time out for our national anthem. Thanks,
beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Wayne Hu, Chaz Bowen, Dean Malakatrinos, and John Rochef of the Hanover Park Band and giving us a nice rendition of the Stars and Stripes as we get near kickoff. Steve Toberdale labeling Jimmy Cavallo, and our statistician Bill Bromberg, and Looking forward to a good one here today, Dale Abling, Iron Hills Conference, Hills Division. Despite Dover's advantage in the series between these two teams, Hanover Park with a much stronger season to date, coming in at 5-1. and one. They had that loss over against Par Hills, even though John Liberato fielded the outplayed Hills at the line of scrimmage. Johnny Morant, the outstanding receiver for Par Hills, broke a couple of long ones. They hope to bounce back here this afternoon. Yeah, they are coming off a loss, but I think, as you said, uh, he felt they outplayed them and they should have won the ball game. So I think they won't even phase them. What a beautiful day, Steve. Look at this weather. Sun's out. The field is beautiful. Halloween. What else could we ask for? Couldn't ask Dover, for much 10, else. Dover returns one of their outstanding young players, Travis Wilfong, from a broken ankle he suffered in baseball. And he will kick off in place of Ruben Doster this afternoon for Dover. Paul Block is deep, along with Anthony Capari for Hanover Park. There's a strong wind blowing, and Dover hopes to take advantage of that wind, deferring and deciding to kick off in your Cablevision North Jersey High School Game of the Week is underway. It's a short kick. Block picks it up at the 22-yard line. Good coverage by Dover, and Block falls forward to the 28-yard line with the Hornets will take over first and ten. Let's check the Hanover Park Hornet offensive unit beginning with the offensive line. It's a veteran unit up front anchored by Kevin Costabos, their outstanding left tackle. Sean Atkinson, a veteran guard, a senior, also an outstanding baseball pitcher. Tom Villani, a junior center. Frank DiMarzio is the right tackle. Looking at the skill position players for Hanover Park, Scaniello, Block, Novalis, Ricciardi, Volani, and Kupari. We'll take another look at them after this first play run from scrimmage. Good penetration across by Dover on first and 10. Doster leading the charge to put the stops on Volani. No gain. Let's check at those skill position players again for Hanover Park. We look at them awfully quick. The quarterback, John Novalis, Jesse Novalis, a junior, has thrown for 11 touchdown passes. Bob Riccardi, Matt Villani, Anthony Capari in the wing tee attack for Hanover Park. Paul Block, six touchdown receptions at split end. Second down and 10 for the Hornets. Novalis, play action, incomplete, intended for Block. Let's check the defense for the Dover Tigers. With a 5-3 alignment, Luis Ruiz is one end, Jermaine Thompson the other end, Rodney Doster, the little brother of Ruben, at one tackle, and Anthony Lotz, he's a good one. Kevin Dorch is the nose guard, Wesley Underwood is one of the linebackers. Ruben Doster, all-state candidate at inside backer, Willie Galicia on the outside, Joey Camacho at a cornerback, along with Patrick Conover, and sophomore Mike Hernio is the safety on second and ten. Rolling out is Novalis. That was third down. So that'll set up a punting situation for the Hornets. Excellent pursuit on that play, Steve. And excellent. A wonderful start for Dover right off the bat. Just what they wanted to do. Hold their ground game down, force a punt this series. And, and so far it looked very strong as far as Dover choosing to kick off with great defensive penetration. Let's take a look again here, Dale Abling, on this run by Novalis. This is just a quarterback keeper. He fakes the belly play and he rolls right. And good pursuit by the entire left side of the defense, mostly Luis Rees and Anthony Lotz. The kick by Block. Hernio picks it up at the 34 and he's immediately tackled. Well, the Dover Tigers will take over at their own 36 yard line, first and 10. And let's look at the Dover offensive unit. Rodney Doster at the tackle, along with Anthony Lotz. Kyle Krug, a sophomore at the guard, along with Ruben Doster. Humberto Nino is the center. Dan Grant, Louis Reese is the tight ends in the double tight end alignment out of the wing tee. Gene Sokolo, former JV quarterback, he gets the starting nod today with the injury to Ryan Birch. Mike Hernio is one half back, along with Jermaine Thompson. And Wesley Underwood is the fullback in the wing tee attack for Kent Schilling and company. First and ten for the Tigers. Hand off inside to Jermaine Thompson for a couple. It'll be second and eight. Let's look at the Hanover Park defense in the trenches. 
Brett Porter at one end, Tim Relliford at the other, Kevin Costabos, outstanding defensive tackle, Sean Atchison, the other defensive tackle, Bobby Nichols is the nose guard, Bob Riccardi, one of the tri-captains at linebacker, along with Anthony Capari, Jesse Navales at a cornerback, along with Paul Block, Rocco Scaniello, another tri-captain of free safety, and Andy DeTore is the strong safety. On second and seven, ball loose! And the Hanover Park Hornets have recovered. Porter, number 81, coming up with a recovery. And Dale Abley, just like that, a turnover. And the Hornets looking now to cash in. Yes, as I said before, Dover had done a wonderful job on defense. And unfortunately, maybe the jitters a little bit for Gene Sicola here. I think he bumped into another player. We're going to see it here on the replay now. But an outstanding play. Just a quick, he's trying to hit the quick hitter and he gets just tackled from behind by 81. First and 10 at the 34, Navalis, three step drop over the middle, in and out of the hands of Bobby Nichols. Well thrown ball by Jesse Navalis. Yes, and what most coaches do after a turnover is go up top quickly, and that's what he did. Almost completed it. Hit him right, in, unfortunately, in the hands. It just, he'll catch the next one, I'm sure. And we spoke ball about it on the pregame, Dale. Hanover Park, a wing T team, but they love to mix the pass with a run. They pass for 466 yards with 1,283 on the ground. Second and 10 for Hanover Park. Double wideouts to the near side. Block and Riccardi. Inside handoff. Nice run up the middle. Anthony Capari on that little inside action. Little misdirection. And a beautiful run by Capari for the first down. Yeah, real, real beautiful following of his halfback block. Anthony really stays home. You're going to see the quarterback reverse pivot, fake to the fullback. It's just a cross buck, and Anthony just follows his blockers, drives his legs, makes a nice 12-yard run, first down. Handoff right up the cut Volani. to the fullback, Volani, for a couple. It'll be second and eight at the 20. The Hanover Park Hornets. A very impressive start for John Liberato's team. They graduated 17 seniors, yet they started the 1998 season 5-0 before losing to Parsippany Hills last week, 21-7. Look at a bounce back here this afternoon, 9.02 to go, first quarter. Hanover Park looking to cash in in the red zone after the fumble and the recovery by Porter. Whistle and movement. John Rotano making the call. And actually, it's going to be against the Dover Tigers for offside. We'll try to take a look at the defensive man moving yeah. on this replay. It's Jonathan Latham, number 58. He's playing defensive end, and he steps across in the neutral zone. That was a good play for Hanover Park because at that point they had a second and eight. Now it ends up being second and three. Second and three at the 16 for Jesse Navales and the Hornets. Play action inside. Riccardi with a handoff. Dives forward for a yard down to the 15. It'll be third and two. That's the same cross buck series that they ran going to the right the last time. They're running it to the wide side of the field and they're running it to the split inside. Hanover Park's coming up in this formation each time in the slot right with the halfback to the split inside. Fakes to the fullback, gives to the halfback back inside to Bob Riccardi. And it's pretty well defended by Dover. Very important play in the ball game here. Third and three. Third and two at the 15. There's a pass to the right side for Block. He's wide open. Paul Block dives forward. Inside the five, down to the four. Well, Steve, if you were going to draw up play action for a training film, that would be outstanding. Perfect play. He ran the belly fake, pulled the ball out, and you'll see it on the replay here that he, that he just hits the receiver wonderfully well. Just a great play by Jesse Navalis. Just the belly fake to the fullback. One step drop, throws it right out in the right flat, and then an excellent run for first down. We'll mark the ball at the five yard line on first and goal for Hanover Park. Navalis keeps on the option, dives forward for two, down to three. Latham in on the tackle for Dover, will set up second and goal. So far in this game, Steve, uh, 
They've run all wide plays. They've run all wide plays to the wide side, to the split end side. This is a reverse pivot again, off the belly. Option, he just keeps the ball, makes two yard gain. Nice tackle by number 58, coming up and doing his job again. He's played pretty solidly this whole game. Second and goal for the Hornets. Navalis over center, Tom Volani. Kapari in motion. Riccardi up the middle, down near the goal line. Galicia coming in to finish up for the tackle. It'll set up third and goal. Bobby Riccardi as Hernio made the initial hit for Dover. Tackle made by Mike Hernio. Third down and goal. Real nice ball. ball the two yard line. Wasn't sure we had the replay on that. It's just a, a second man through play running. He ran it actually out of the eye. He just, uh, here it is. He gives the ball to the tailback. He just follows the fullback right up the gut. Third and goal at the one for Hanover Park. Bolani off the right side. Great penetration by Underwood. Who pulls him down short of the goal. Interesting, Steve, on the last two plays inside the three-yard line, uh, Hanover Park has run out of the I formation, not out of the wing T. Trying to take advantage of the fullback's block, but both times, Dover's done a wonderful job. And Dale a loss of a yard on that play, so it's going to be fourth and goal at the two. Wesley Underwood with a great play from his linebacker spot, stunning in. They've made some nice penetration, Dover has. We'll see if they can hold here. And certainly what's shaping up is one of the biggest plays of the game. We'll take another look at it. With Again, Underwood that's coming the, in. That's the eye pop out of the tailback handoff. Uh, interesting call now. Now what do you do? You're in fourth and I guess a long three. You had, you're kicking into the wind, so I'm not sure that you're going to go with the field goal, but uh, personally, that's what I would do. I'd put three points up on the board. I learned that many times, but I didn't do it, and I was always sorry later. And the Hornets have an outstanding place kicker in block who's hit 19 of 20 extra points this year. Has not booted a field goal as of yet. Taking a look at the standings in the Iron Hills Hills Division. Parsippany Hills leading the way at 6-0. Hanover Park at 5-1. And, and Dover at 4-2. It's a big fourth in goal for the Hornets. Novalis over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Kapari. And Dover that ball was right there, Dylan. Yeah, the unfortunately, that, <laughs> that's, that's what high school football is all about. Outstanding play by the quarterback, and he that's just man, man, taking that's his eye off just a little bit. Six. It's a play-action pass to the right side, a quick fake to the fullback, and outstanding play by Jesse. He just pulls the ball down, hits Kapari right in the numbers, and he had to turn around a little bit for that catch, Steve, and I think it threw him off balance just a hair. So Dover now with their backs to the wall, holding fourth in the red zone. Gene Sicola and the Tigers take over. Hernio gets it across the five, out to the six that for a pickup of three. Kapari in on the tackle Anthony from his Kapari. inside linebacker position. Anthony Kapari comes in with a team leading 40 tackles, including 31 three. solo Second hits. Down, seven down there Dover. inside the three yard line, you get four down, four, on four yard yards line. on first down. That's a great carry. The drive for Hanover Park, eight plays, 32 yards, took up 345, and they come up with naught, nothing, as Dover holds inside the five. Second and seven at the six for Dover. Sokola handing off to Thompson, and good convergence by the Hornets. Navalis up from his cornerback spot That'll to clean up. Sean Atchison. Sean Atchison with the initial hit. I'm sure that their game plan is to key Jermaine Thompson. He's rushed 82 one, times for 582 seven, yards and six TDs, so I would suspect the game plan for Hanover well, Park is to shut him down. Give him a half a yard on that, but it's still third and seven. And here's a team, Dover, as the Tigers call a timeout, Dale Abling. They've thrown the ball 15 times this year. And add, next to nothing when you take into account they played six games. And add to that, they're playing a JV quarterback, so I wouldn't be surprised if they throw the ball down here on the, on the six-yard line. Oh, I'm sorry, there was the replay. Good defensive penetration again by the entire Hanover Park team. Looking ahead 
to next week here on the Cablevision North Jersey High School Football Game of the Week. We'll be up in Northern Bergen Interscholastic League territory in Oakland for Northern Highlands against Indian Hills. That could decide the NBIL Division II championship. Right here we have a great Iron Hills Hills Division game shaping up. Steve Tuber, Dale Abling. And looking at total yards in the early going, Hanover Park with 36 to Dover's three. Of course, this now a big third down play for Dover at their own six-yard line. They held Hanover Park after fumbling the ball away. And Hanover Park marched in inside the five. And right here, big play for Gene Sokola and the Tigers. Thompson in motion. Sokola keeps. And Gene Sokola out to the 20 yard line. Great deception on the option. Everybody thought Underwood got the football, but Gene Sokola picks up the first down. Beautiful fake by Gene, and uh, he deserves all the credit. This is the belly option. Excellent fake to number six, Wesley Underwood. Reverse pivot, puts the ball in the pocket, and everybody sort of sucked in. He just keeps the ball, turns the corner, and makes a nice 10 yard gain for a first down. Boy, what a big play in this series. Brings it from the six out to the 19, first and 10. Underwood, and he is sworn by the Hornets. Flag thrown. Relaford, number 19, the defensive end, in on the stop along with Costabos from his tackle slot. We'll see what the flag is for. Usually when it's thrown by that person in the middle, it's usually offensive holding. Referee John Rotano will make the indication. And that'll take it back 10 yards from the point of the infraction if the Hornets choose to take the penalty, which you would think they would. Boy, what a lovely day up here, Steve. I mean, I'm telling you, no one's, I'd rather be than right here. 55 degrees, the sun is out. Look at this field, beautifully marked. The end zones look like we're in the NFL here. This it's is great. It's gorgeous out here in East Hanover. If you drive up and down Route 10, uh, near the big shopping centers, we're just off on a parallel road, Mount Pleasant Avenue. Gorgeous location here in East Hanover in the heart of Morris County. You know, Steve, the, the wing tee is basically only six or seven plays, but most people have to defend it differently because of formation and motion changes. So you really end up defending about 35 plays with all the different shifts. Lots of deception. First in 20 from the nine. Thompson in motion. Handoff. Actually, Sokola kept the ball, tried to get outside on the option, was stopped cold. But he is doing a nice job of his face in there to the fullback. I, for a JV young man moved up and starting on a varsity level, he's showing a lot of poise. He had the one turnover, but down here where he's needed to be poised, he's done a nice job. Ryan Birch went down with an ankle injury in the second quarter against Morris Hills last week in an eventual Dover 14-6 victory. Gene Sokola, the JV quarterback, came in back through the winning touchdown to Mike Hernio with 38 seconds left in the game to beat Morris Hills and avoid overtime. Second and 20. Sokola throwing near sideline, complete to Hernio. Mike Hernio cuts back, and he's across the 30 out to the 32 yard line for a first down. Excellent play by the Dover Tigers. Outstanding. Again, Steve, most passing offense in the wing tee comes off play action. Now, this is a perfect example of it. Real good job, Jazine Gene Sokola. Again, he reverse pivots, takes the ball to the fullback, or actually the tailback that time, and rolls to the right flat and makes an outstanding pass to Mike Hernio. Real first down. They're really showing me a lot here when you figure they started this series on the three-yard line. They're out to the 32-yard line, first and 10 for the Dover Tigers. Hand off to Underwood, who stopped completely cold. Again, it was Relaford, along with good penetration by Andy DeTore from his safety spot. Yeah, but I think what's happening is Bob Nichols and Kevin Costabos and Sean Atchison up front are doing their job. And you know, Gail, it up they inside. create that situation with Costabus and Nichols and company, allowing the strong That's safety right. and the linebackers to make the hits Most as we definitely. take another look. It's just a quick hitter up the middle, but uh, just great penetration by the entire Hanover Park defense. But as you said, made by the strong safety. Second and ten for Dover. It's Thompson, Jermaine Thompson, up to the 40-yard line. 
close to a first down. It might be a half a yard short. This is the same crossbuck series that Hanover Park ran against Dover. Not sure whether they make the first down here. Take the first man through, give it back to the crossbuck. I don't think he makes the first down, but an outstanding run by Tremaine. Excellent run by Thompson. Came in averaging over seven yards a carry. The right halfback, 5'10", 180-pound senior. I think what happened there is Ruben Doster and Anthony Lotz did their job and really made key blocks to the strong side play. Eighth play of this drive, third and one for Dover. Handoff is stuffed up, and they're going to be short as Hermio is brought down by Porter. And the Hanover Park defense comes up big on third down. Again, Kevin Costabos, Bob Nichols, Sean Atchison inside, ru running that 52 defense. All you really have to do is straighten up your man, and they do that. And the ball's just given on a quick hitter, and unfortunately for Dover, but let me tell you, I'm very impressed by the fact that they drove the ball out to the 40. Now they're going to punt Hanover Park back down into their zone. Augusto Ramos comes in to punt. Jesse Novalis, Paul Block are the return men for the Hornets. It'll be Novalis running back to his 23-yard line. Jesse Novalis finds an opening, and Novalis, he's across midfield down to the 47-yard line of the Dover Tigers on excellent return by Jesse Novalis. Super job. You know, Dover picked the win for the first half, Steve, and the win was uh, a important part of that punt, but excellent blocking. He found his running lane and uh, just did an outstanding job on the return. So field position has been totally in the favor of the Hanover Park Hornets. Here's the replay, Jesse catching the punt. Looked like first he was going to down it with his knee, but he cuts inside, makes a good cut, and makes a nice game. Coming back to live action, Rodney Doster stopping Rodney the Doster. penetration of Villani on the carry. Okay. It'll set up a second and 11 for the loss of one on the play. Rodney Doster, 6'3", 265-pound sophomore, the younger brother of Ruben Doster. Put in on 82 tackles, Steve, so that tells you right away what kind of a player he is. Well, Ruben with those 82, and Rodney with 27, his younger brother. Second and 11 for the Hornets at their 48, at the 48 of Dover. Good penetration this time by the stunning linebacker, Doster, who stops Matt Volani cold. So we see Ruben Doster there. We saw him pitching up at the line of scrimmage. And he came in from his middle linebacker spot to make the tackle. The 7-6 sound familiar, Steve, from last year? <laughs> it's shaping up like that, isn't it? Looks like we're going to have a real nip and tucker here. Outstanding play by Ruben. He snuck up. You could see it early, but he just filled the hole very nicely. There it is. He steps in. Oh, look at the help he gets. Wow, that's outstanding. And that could be the last play of the first quarter, or maybe not. We'll see if the Hanover Park Hornets are able to snap the ball. We're down to five seconds. A nice gang tackle off Wesley Underwood on that play, too. Novalis gets the play off. Play action. Novalis looking deep off the hands of Block. Well thrown ball. Galicia defending. And a fast moving first quarter comes to an end. Dover and Hanover Park are scoreless. We got a good one here in the Iron Hills Conference Hills Division from East Hanover. And we'll be back with second quarter action right after this. at Hanover Park High School getting set for second quarter action. Steve Tober, Dale Abling. And the Hanover Park Hornets in punt formation with Paul Block. A high spiral. And Wilfong and Hernia watch it take a great Hornet roll all the way
way down to the six-yard line. And again, field position, a 42-yard punt by Paul Block and Dale Abling. We'll summarize that first quarter in our scoreless game so far. Well, I'd summarize it by saying uh, Dover has a psychological edge. They came into the game under, as the underdog. Uh, Hanover Park takes the ball right down to the three-yard line, doesn't score, has the leading... <clears throat> okay, here's our first quarter stats. Actually, in first downs, it ended up very close. Rushing yardage the same. And ironically, the team that's not the passing team is the team ends up with the most yardage. Gene Sokola, one for one for 22 yards. Wide Navalis for Hanover Park is one for five. First down from the six. Great penetration is Hanover Park. Defensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. Atchison again, along with Costabos, in on the stop. Of one, loss of one. A, a loss play. of one on the play. Loss of one and just a massive gang tackle by the whole left side of the line. Brings up a second and 11. You know, this is a great spot, though, for the maturity of Gene Sokolo, Dale Abling. Young quarterback. He's had his back to the wall on two straight Go series down. now. Here he's now back at his four on second and 11. Well, he, he won the game last week for him, so let's see what he can do. Sokolo handing off to Underwood, who cuts across the 10 out to the 11-yard line. A 7-yard gain for Underwood. That's bread and butter in the wing tee. That's the fullback belly for a 7-yard gain. And Dover talking Good about field position. Our average start has been from the 15-yard line. Oh, the 11-yard line. It's just a reverse pivot and a handoff to the fullback. He follows the cross block or the straight-ahead blocking of his right side of the line. Makes a nice 7-yard gain. Wesley Underwood, he averages 5.7 yards per carry. 364 yards coming in. Two touchdowns. Rushed for 90 yards against Summit and 79 last week against Morris Hills. It sets up a third and five at the 11-yard line. Long count in movement on the right side. Grant, the tight end, number 84, moved. Unfortunately, the uh, long play, the long count is to uh, draw the defense offsides, and unfortunately, a little impatience on the offensive right side of the line. That's the third penalty for Dover for 20 yards. Well, that was a long count. That was a very long count. So the ball back to the six-yard line. It'll set up a third and nine. Just what Dover doesn't want to have, third and long with a young quarterback, a team that doesn't pass the ball very well. Travis Wilfong is wide to the near side. Sokolo with a three-step drop. The ball is batted down. Could be a fumble. We'll see. For the, they're saying Kapari recovered. And they are... We're waiting for the indication from referee John Rotano. And they're saying it's still Dover football. Take a look at it again if we have a chance. Coca-Cola is 5'10". Back on the backfield. Gene just takes the ball, makes a short one or two step drop, looking to throw over in the left flat, and the ball is tipped out of his hand. Can't see the number. Kapari, of, number it was Kapari. Okay, good job by him. But a loss of three on the play. I think his hand was coming forward, and they called it an offensive pass. Forward and now pass. Dover to punt with Augusto Ramos with Block standing inside his 30-yard line. So Hanover Park is guaranteed of having excellent field position. Ball deflected and partially blocked, and it bounces down at the 23-yard line. Well, he had everything against him on that play, Steve. He had the heavy wind, he was in the end zone, and he had a real hard pass rush by Hanover Park. Ends up being about a 15-yard punt, I believe. And we'll see if we can take another look to see who got a hand on that ball. He's going to come right towards it. Sam? Okay, we have a replay of this punt. As I said, he's punting out of the end zone. The snap is good. And just there, excellent pass rush, almost blocked. Very lucky to get that, pe that punt off. And back to live action, Volani on first down, taking the carry and picking up four yards inside the 15 down to the 14. Ruben Doster in on the tackle. 
you know, four speed. possessions, Dale, for Hanover yeah, Park. Four, four, three have been in Dover territory. Six. Well, I was just starting to say, you, you're playing against the odds if you start every series like Dover has inside your 20. It has to catch up with you sooner or later. Second and six. The pitch to Kapari. Kapari running around the left side. He's down inside the 10, down to the 8 yard line. Close to Hanover Park first down. Most coaches will tell you the most difficult play to defense in the red zone is the option. Jimmy Cavallo is Third down in the field, the and uh, Jimmy C., let's Four hear what you have to say. Uh, you know, Steve, when you look at number 61 for Hanover Park, Frank DiMarzio, not only does Frank have to open up some holes as the Hornets try to get in the all, into the end zone here, not only does he have to pa pass block, but at halftime, he will be named homecoming queen right here at Hanover Park. Uh, the duties go on and on. Life of a lineman, right, guys? That's right, absolutely. Third and one. The pass to Carla completes the block. Paul Block is down for a first and goal down to the three-yard line. Just a quick three-step drop and a pass in the flat to Paul Block. But well defended by Joe Camacho. It certainly could have been a touchdown. Excellent play. The young man comes up and makes a great stick. A little three-step drop, pass in the flat. Block, as, as we know, their leading receiver. But Joe Camacho stays home, makes grabs a hold, and holds on for dear life. All 150 pounds. 8.38 to go, first half, no score, but Hanover Park knocking on the door, first and goal at the three-yard line. Kapari in motion, the pass looking for block, end zone, in and out of his hands, incomplete. Nice timing pattern. Excellent time. With Pat Conover defending for Dover. Coaches teach that play, Steve, and just tell the quarterback to throw to that back corner flag or the back corner uh, marker and just lay it up outside if it's wide doesn't matter if it's not caught main thing is don't under throw it the question is Dale Ablin can Dover do it again they stopped Hanover Park inside the five in the first quarter here they have the ball second and goal at the four we'll see what happens Novalis play action Novalis looking to take it himself and Novalis is brought down Ruben Doster, along with Ruiz, making the stop at the five. Yeah, I thought the key play, part of that play, was the penetration by Luis Ruiz. Did an excellent job. Interesting here, they've driven the ball down twice, got down on the goal line area, and have gone to the air both times. This is a play action fake, again with Jesse just rolling left, but great penetration by the defense, both Ruiz wonderful play. Now, Dale Ailey, what do you come back here now on third and goal? We tried play action. We tried the timing pattern in the, in the end zone there to block. Well, it's my belief that once you throw on first and second down, <laughs> you force yourself to either run the draw or the screen or pass now again because you don't really have a lot of options. You wonder if this sets it up for the draw. Kent Schilling and the yep. Dover defense have done very well. Hanover Park just one for five on third down conversions, including once inside the five-yard line. 8.04 to go here in the second quarter. You're watching the Cablevision North Jersey High School football game of the week. Hanover Park and Dover here from East Hanover. Steve Tuber, Dale Abling, Jimmy Cavallo, statistician Bill Bromberg. Hope you're enjoying this wonderful day of high school football and a very
it again. I'm going to give credit to the Ghosts and Goblins here because they've been on the three. Now they're on the two. So the Hornets with a chance to regroup. A minute nine to go. First and goal at the two. Bolani towards the goal line. Touchdown. Head over park. Matt Bolani with his second touchdown of the season. And with one minute left in the first half, Hanover Park leads six to nothing. Well, this is just a quick hitter right up the middle. He only had a yard and a half to go. Real good play. Excellent blocking by Mike Prince, Tom Villani up front. And give the ball to the fullback. He's supposed to be a bread and butter man on the goal line. And he does his job. Great leg drive. And real nice play by Sean Atchison, Tom Villani, Frank DiMarzio. Finally, I guess they hit pay dirt, but I call block. Is Block wide with the line. extra point, and so Block, who had come in 19 of 20 for extra left. points, misses. Eight plays, 50 Silver yards, left. took up 359. And remember, the first play of that drive was an eight-yard loss. Yeah, but it was followed by two outstanding passes to, you know, make up for the play. It's Rocco Scaniello with two excellent receptions, including a 17-yarder on a third down play to get them over territory. Advisor, I thought so the long. poise of Jesse Novalis on that series showed why he had 11 evening. touchdown passes. When he needed to, he Starting came through and got some points on the board in the first half. Once again, today's televised game will be seen tonight. So finally, the Dover resistance cannot hold court. I mean, how many times can you have your back to the wall? I mean, you might think that Dover might be that fortunate to be down 6 nothing with a three drive that Hanover Park has had. The the Ironically, the they scored on the longest drive. They had they started that series on the 50. Two of the other series started inside the 30-yard line. Paul Block to kick off. Wilfong, Hernio, and Thompson are deep. Short kick. Wilfong is tripped up at the 32-yard line, and Dover will have 56 seconds left here in the first half, no trailing six to nothing.
John Liberato and coach after being stopped twice inside the five. What were the adjustments made on the last drive you guys punched it in? Well, we just stayed with what we worked on all week, and we finally came through. I, any hesitation to use your kick or block on some field goals when you guys are inside the five? No hesitation at all. We just thought we could punch it in, and we did. <laughs> You're dominating this game from a field position standpoint. What's been the key defensively for you guys? Our kids run to the ball very well, and they understand this game. All right, coach, go talk to your team at halftime. John Liberato, I'm sure he's a whole lot happier if his team finally punched one in. Stephen Dale back upstairs. Thank you, Jimmy C. John Liberato uh, thinking about, hey, should I try to kick a field goal those first two Good series? Well, I finally cashed in, and I've got a 6 nothing lead for my ball club. When we come back, we'll talk more about this first half. You're watching the Cablevision North Jersey High School Football Game of the Week. Back in East Hanover at Hanover Park High School at halftime. Hanover Park leading to over six to nothing. Steve Tober, Dale Abling, Jimmy Cavallo, and uh, Dale Abling. Very interesting first half. Uh, defense is dominating Hanover Park with great field position. Three drives inside the Dover five. The Dover only was unable to hold once, and it resulted in a Matt Bellani touchdown run. Uh, six nothing from Dover's perspective. You got to feel fairly fortunate. Yeah, it was totally a field position football half. I mean, I'll tell you one thing, though. John Liberato, I think, uh, maybe just changed his halftime talk because I suspect if he was going in there and hadn't scored after being down there three times, there were going to be a lot of ringing ears in that halftime speech. But they did come through. Uh, again, Dover spent the whole half on their defensive end of the field, had to drive 75 or more yards. Very, very tough to do. And Dover with a JV quarterback from a couple of games ago, Gene Sokola coming in. He was one for three in a win over Morris Hills last week, including the winning touchdown pass to Mike Hernio. He comes back here today, was fairly impressive in the first half, and for a time there overshadowed the outstanding Jesse Navalis of Hanover Park. Most definitely did. Uh, showed an awful lot of poise. Started his first series on the three-yard line, another one inside. The I think uh, he had one fumble at the beginning of the game, but that really didn't matter. It didn't have any, any points off that. I, sh I thought he showed a lot of poise. But as will happen, uh, the stronger and more experienced player had an outstanding drive in the last drive of the ball game to put the six points up on the on the board. This game monumental for Hannibal Park in terms of staying in pace with Parsippany Hills in the Iron Hills Conference Hills Division. And Parsippany Hills is undefeated in the loop in Hanover Park second at five and one along with West Essex. And you'll look at the division to the head towards the playoffs and you don't want to fall two games behind the division leader even though you're looking playoffs. You also have to be thinking still about the conference. Oh, most definitely. I mean, I think the most important... I really feel that last year's situation has to come and play mentally too, especially in the kids' mind. You win the Iron Hills Conference and then you don't get to go to the state very big part of this. And Dale Avery, let's take a look at some of the first half stats compiled by Bill Bromberg and you look at the uh, time of possession fairly even. The Hornets with a three minute edge. 109 yards total for the Hornets to 63. Dover passing 42 to 56. First downs the Hornets. They had the field position. An incredible advantage there for Hanover Park with an average start at the Dover 44. Well, Dover's average start at its own 16. But you can't take much away from this. No, you can't. And, and you have to remember, the Dover defense was on the field for probably two-thirds of that time. So, uh, very impressive Dover defense. I, I just can't speak enough about their heart. I thought they played their hearts out. Personally, I think the score should be 9 or uh, maybe 12 to nothing. I think you should kick those field goals. But, hey, look, it's awful easy to sit up here and second guess. Well, it's 6 nothing. Hanover Park leading Dover. We're at halftime, and we'll come back with more right after this. Dale Abling, Jimmy Cavallo, getting near the third, and it down to Jimmy Cavallo. Jimmy? 
ESPN, also on Channel 98. Listen, get back into the game. How about the adjustments? Your JV quarterback seems to be holding up well. He's doing a great job, and we're ready to go with him. He can throw, and he can run. He's doing a nice job. All right, Coach, go get him. That's Ken Schilling. <laughs> Back upstairs. Sorry, guys. we got to get off the field. Jimmy, see, it's windy out there today, and it's tough to hold on to those pads. I know what it's like up here. It's wind blowing around on a gorgeous afternoon, Halloween day. Hanover Park choosing the wind here to kick off in the second half. Jermaine Thompson is deep along with Mike Hernio and Travis Wilfong with Hanover Park leading 6-0. The Hornets dominating field position in the first half. Dover did not get past their own 40-yard line in the first half. And I assume, Steve, that's why he chose to kick here with the win. Keep them at bay. It's Thompson at his 10. Jermaine Thompson unable to elude the great coverage. Matt Volani, the starting fullback in on the tackle and the Dover Tigers will take over first and 10 at their 23 yard line. The Dover Tigers with Gene Sokola the quarterback in their wing tee attack. Mike Hernio the left halfback, Jermaine Thompson the right halfback and Wesley Underwood is the fullback. Hernio in the slot on first and 10 from the 23. Handoff goes to Jermaine Thompson and a flag thrown on a sweep as Thompson with a nice cutback. Jermaine Thompson finally that brought down Thompson. after a 10-yard game, but appears to be holding against the Dover Tigers. Yeah, that, that time Dover came up with two tight ends, Steve, and a wing. First time today they've used that uh, power formation to run. Unfortunately, the sweep was well run by Jermaine, but it's going to turn out to come back, I believe. Just a sweet play, fake to the fullback up the middle. And a nice play by Jermaine, loses his balance, but brings it back. What a great play there. Good second effort. Looking to make the circle dot. Finally brought down, I think, by number 71. Dover. Sean Atchison. It's fourth penalty for the Tigers. Four penalties for 35 yards. The Hornets have not committed a penalty here so far this afternoon. Second and 20 from the 13 for Gene Sokola and the Tigers. It's Thompson again around the near side. Well, they went back to the well, ran the same play again to the left side. Brett Porter in on the stop after a one yard pickup. And so far, not much variety from the Dover offense here, Dale No, just the sweep again. Fake the fullback. Lead block. What happens on this play is we have two guards that pull. One kicks out to the end, the other turns north and south. Could have been close almost to a uh, face mask. Yeah, there, very close. Uh, not too close. Average yards per carry in the first half, 1.7 yards. Very paltry. Second and 18. So call on a play action. Gets it off. Completes the Wilfong at the 19 for about a three-yard pickup. It's still going to be third and about 14. Boy, he was under tremendous pressure on that rollout pass. But he held his poise, uh, as we've said all along, for a JV player coming up. He's done a nice job. Play action. He rolls right. Look at 18 coming up behind him here. Wow, look at that rush. Thank you. Gets it off, though. Outstanding job. Gene Sokola, 3 okay. of 5 for 45 yards here today. The junior quarterback in his first varsity start. Taking over for the injured Ryan Birch. Third and 13. Play action, Sokola looking deep and Block intercepts. Paul Block on the return, Block being pursued and finally brought down at the 34 yard line. That ball thrown out for all takers and it was yeah. Paul Block, number 13, from his cornerback slot with his fifth interception of the season. Yeah, a little bit of a desperation toss here, Steve. <clears throat> this is not play action. It's just a straight drop. And he sets his feet well, but the ball sort of hangs up in the wind. He's throwing against the wind and overthrows his receiver by about seven yards. A wonderful reception by Mr. Block. Real good football player, as we've said all along. And Hanover Park again with excellent field position for Jesse Novalis. 
Volani, the fullback, and a horde of Tiger tacklers led by Wesley Underwood with the stop. Wesley Underwood and uh, Ruben Doster, who's always got a hat on the ball. That's just a belly play. Real nice carry, but excellent defensive uh, pursuit by the whole left side of the line. The Hornets have not exactly burned it up on the ground, averaging 2.5 yards per carry. Their sixth possession, five of them have started in Dover territory. Second and eight from the 32. Novalis on the option. Novalis, he's got the first down and more. Jesse Novalis down to the 14-yard line. Well, Jesse's a complete football player as a quarterback. He runs the option here, it keeps it, doesn't have to pitch the ball, and makes a beautiful first down. 18-yard pickup for the junior signal caller, Jesse Novalis. The longest run from scrimmage so far for Hanover Park. This is run to the short side of the field, just a reverse pivot, rolls left, fakes one man, and then just, we've lost it a little bit here, but then he runs wide, makes a nice 18-yard gain. First and 10 Hornets. Inside on the counter to Riccardi, who might have gotten two yards. Blocked up front pretty well by Kevin Castibos, Mike Prince. And I'm not sure if that was to the tight end side, but I believe Rocco Scaniello also was in on that. I like what I've seen, Dale, from the younger Doster also. Rodney Doster, number 71, the defensive tackle, 265-pound sophomore, in on the stop. Turns out to be a half-yard pickup, second and nine at the 14. Yeah, it bodes good future for him. with a short pass and the flight complete to Nichols down to the eight yard line. Bobby Nichols, one of the messenger tight ends. Well played, well defended, but uh, just enough that I think almost close enough to push the yard sticks. Here's the replay, good play action fake. Just a one step drop and he throws out over the outstretched hands there of number 31, almost knocked the ball down. This is Hanover Park's 11th play inside the 10-yard line. The ball at the 8th. They can get to the first down at the 4-yard line if they convert here. Play action. Novalis looks end zone to Torrey. And it appeared that it was picked off. An interception for Dover. Oh, boy, what a big play in this ball game. Again, we've been saying it all day about Ruben the Doster <laughs> with the football. Let's take a look. Intended for Tatori. Play action fake. Quarterback sets up well. Good protection at that point. Real good coverage in the end zone, though. Look at all the white shirts around the ball. The ball actually bounces off the receiver's hands. And Ruben hands. Doster Ru comes up with it. Right into Ruben's hands. Oh, what a pretty play by Ruben Doster. Great concentration. So the Dover Tigers survive again in the red zone defensively. First and 10 from the 20. Pass to Thompson in the flat. Thompson going forward on a nice run after the catch for seven yards. Well, I thought I saw motion on the play, but the I looked, thought so too. <laughs> looked like the split end, <laughs> split end went forward about two steps, but they got away with it. Well, coach, there was no call made. <laughs> anyway, it's just a, that's called a quick hitch. He just throws the ball out to the split end. He steps forward. He's supposed to do that after the snap, not for it. Makes a nice reception here, and now he makes a good move right here. He eludes the tackle, makes a nice five-yard game. And there we do see the flags on second and three. The handoff to Underwood and flags all over the place. 7.09 to go third quarter. 6-0 Hanover Park. And John Rattano with the sun in his eyes. Procedure against the Dover Tigers. I think that's the fifth penalty for Dover for uh, 40 yards. Just killing them. They keep shooting themselves in the foot. They can't do that. And no penalties, of course, for Hanover Park, which is the other key statistic. And again, this field position disadvantage for Dover has been monumental. When you consider they have not gone beyond their own 40-yard line here this afternoon. Second and 11 from the 21. Quick drop of pass. And a lateral hernio going deep for Wilfong. He's got it. 
Travis Wilfong out at the 48-yard line. The lateral pass to Hernio. He completes downfield to Wilfong, and the prettiest play in the furthest penetration so far this afternoon for the Dover Tigers. Well, Steve, it's Halloween. We're supposed to have trick plays. That's what it's all about. This is called a double pass. We have two twins out to the left. One serves as a receiver, one as a passer. The first man catches the ball and just throws it up in the air. Not actually a well-thrown ball, but certainly enough to get a completion. And a great field position situation, finally. Dover at the 49-yard line, inside handoff. Thompson in the Hanover Park territory. First time in the day. Two yards. First time they've been in Hornet territory here this afternoon. Jermaine Thompson on the carry. It's so important, Steve, for a team to be able to run their complete offense. You can't do it if you're backed up every time in your, the other team's red zone. Now we'll see if Dover can move the ball. Second and eight for the Tigers. Finally across the midfield stripe for the first time this afternoon. Here we are in the third quarter. So call the hands off to Jermaine Thompson. Sweep left. And brought down after maybe a half a yard, if that. Good containment that time and a good pursuit from linebacker Anthony Kapari. No game on the play, third down. Unfortunately, you're running that sweep to the short side of the field out of a tight formation it makes it very difficult to turn the corner. To break this corner down, you little, need a little more yardage. Good kick out blocked by 51. Unfortunately, I thought the running back read the play wrong. Should have cut up inside that kick out block. Half yard pickup, third and eight from the 49 at Hanover Park. Sokola handing up to Hernio, again looking to throw, going deep, and triple coverage on Patrick Conover. Paul Black defending along with Rocco Scaniello. Well, he had time to throw the ball, but unfortunately, uh, one deep receiver and all three three secondary people picked the play up and covered it very well. So it sets up a hunting situation. Very difficult to throw the ball long into that heavy wind, too. For Augusto Ramos with Jesse Navalis and Paul Block deep standing inside their 30. High snap. Novalis retreating now at the 35-yard line. Where he's brought down. Ramos fortunate to get that kick off. Yeah, a nice punt, kept it low, didn't get it up in the air, so it didn't, it wasn't affected a great deal by the wind. And the Hanover Park Hornets and Jesse Novalis will take over. My gosh, Steve, they're starting and they gotta go 70 yards. It's been unusual for Hanover Park with such great field position all afternoon long, most of the time in Dover territory, but all they have is a 6-0 lead with 5.31 to go here in the third quarter. Novalis up the middle to Bellani, who stopped after a yard pickup. Ruben Doster. And Ruben Doster, who comes in averaging 13 tackles a game. He's the leader at middle linebacker. Just a quick hitter up the middle with the two-year fullback, well defended by the Dover interior line. In Hanover Park, you want to play possession, keep the field position. You've got a narrow 6-0 lead, but Kent Schilling and the company have to stop the Hornets once again. But you also action. you have the wind here for five minutes. Steve. Novalis going long, almost intercepted. Intended for Nichols, and a good play defensively by Joe Camacho. Well, as I said, uh, You've got five minutes more of the Third win in this, this half, and it, he went with a play-action pass, but an excellent coverage by Joe Camacho. Novalis now 5 of 12 for 62 yards. Here's the replay. Straight drop back pass. Protection in front of him. He doesn't set his feet here to throw this ball. He throws it on the run and hangs it up just a hair. Third and 11. Novalis on the draw, Riccardi, and he has brought That's down Luis Ruiz. Little mix up there on the handoff and a loss on the play. That was an unusual draw play. There was a play action fake first, then a draw after that. And I think the timing was just a tiny bit off, as you said. 
Very important play there. Now, Steve, it makes a fourth and long, forces them to punt. Although they have the win, it should be the first time that Dover is uh, catching the ball after a series where they're in pretty good field position. Ball blocked the punt. Hernio, and he's got it. Whistle, and they say a fair catch was called, it appears. Yes, it was. So it'll be Dover ball at the 35 yard line. Hernio, a sophomore. His dad, Joe, is a maintenance supervisor at Cablevision Mars. Unfortunately, the man that didn't catch the ball made the signal, Jermaine Thompson. That's right. And he had an actual 15 yard gain. That's a shame. The, yeah, the wrong person makes the snap, the signal. Nice return. I think John Liberato might have been excited. looking for a Come penalty on. to be called you guys flat. Come on. on that play. A timeout for the Hornets. Usually on a fair catch, you try to advance the ball, yeah. they, fr they throw the flag. Dover fortunate in this instance. I believe the uh, official was right on the spot and dropped the marker, so he knew where it was. That's why he didn't throw the flag. And the Dover Tigers with a rich history. Won North Jersey Section 2 Group 2 state playoff titles in 1984, 92, and 96. They've won 60 of the last 75 games, and that also includes the coaching tenures of Jerry Tardivi and Gary Zakovic. 11-0 in 1996 under Zakovic, beating Mendham 37-7 at Giants Stadium for the state playoff title. And lost to Caldwell last year in a very competitive semifinal game in the Chiefs, the prohibitive favorite this year. John Liberato, very incensed <laughs> down on the field for Hanover Park. I don't know if we can get a look at John on the sidelines from one of our cameramen down there, but John Liberato, the Hanover Park head mentor, is upset. Yeah, he thinks it should have been a 10 or 15 yard penalty there. So it'll be first and 10 for the Dover Tigers at their own 35 yard line. 4.05 to go, third quarter. Hanover Park with a 6 0 lead. Hernio in motion. Sokola under pressure, delivers intercepted by Relaford. Defensive end, Tim Relaford comes up with a pick. And just like that, the Hornets have the ball back. I really do believe the wind is being a big factor in this passing game for Dover. Unfortunately, Gene rolls right, does everything correct up to the time he throws the ball, has good protection in front, and the ball just hangs up in the wind, and it just unfortunately is picked off. The receiver is behind him. Not quite high enough. Third turnover for Dover. End of a park ball at the 37. Volani and the big fullback turns forward down to the 33 for a four-yard pickup. Matt Volani, 5'11", 185 pounds, senior fullback at 88 yards against Weequake and 138 against Summit and 100 even against Mount Olive. That was a nice four yard gain and actually could have been a two yard loss. He bounced off Wesley Underwood uh, with good second effort, made a nice first down carry. Second and seven at the 33. Kapari, Kapari the halfback inside the 25 down to the 23 for a first down for the Hornets. The right halfback, Anthony Kapari. Boy, what a hard run. Outstanding job. Leg drive, second effort. Nine yards on the pickup and a first down for Hanover Park. This is just the sweep with the two guards out in front. He reads his blocks well, turns up for you, and most importantly, broke a tackle, a leg tackle, and pulled forward for a nine-yard gain. That's the ninth first down for the Hornets. Volani, flag thrown. That job, Galicia coming up from his linebacker slot to make the hit for Dover. We'll wait for the indication from John Rotano. Appears to be holding against the Hornets. I believe that might be the first penalty of the game for Hanover Park. They've been mistake-free, John Liberato's team has. John Liberato, who trained under Frank Batone, a legendary coach at New Providence. In fact, had the luxury of learning 
under the ropes with Mr. Patone as a rookie assistant, then coached at Parsippany under Brad Wilbur for six years. So first and 17, back to the 32-yard line, 10 yards from the point of the infraction. And Jesse Navalis in company. Navalis passing, completing to Nichols. Down to the 24. First seven-yard pickup. Real nice job. What he does here well, Steve, is he, he really makes the first play action fake and freezes the two interior linebackers. Nice high cast, real good reception. Changes that call now from first and 17 to second and a long 10 or 11. Second and 10 from the 24, another flag flag. Could be too much time, we'll wait and see. Motion. Illegal procedure against the Hornets. Kind of unusual, he had the whistle blown that quickly. Yeah, I believe he put his hand down and picked it up, Steve. A tight end, number 12. Can't do that, unfortunately. Rocco Scaniello. The and they're saying the guard lined up over the ball. Second and 15. The pitch. Kapari down to the 24-yard line. Good pursuit by Dover. Patrick Conover. Nice six-yard gain on the option, but the penalty before just hurt them for five, so really you're just getting back the same yard. So third and ten at the 25 for the Hornets. 2.15 to go, third quarter. Hanover Park with a 6-0 lead. Double receivers to the near side. DeTore in block. Here's Novalis. Completes the block. Paul Block. Inside the 10-yard line for a first down. And a crossing pattern. And Block with another big reception for number 13. Again, give credit where credit is due to Kevin Castibos, Mike Prince, Tom Villani, all those guys up front. They're giving him plenty of time. There's the play action to fullback. Now, real good pursuit here, but quarterback just sets up, throws a perfect sprint out pass, and he throws to the, you know, bread and butter. That's the kid you want to catch your ball. He's your number one receiver. First down at the 10-yard line. Novalis with a pitch, it's fumbled, and it's picked up by Galicia. And another turnover for Hanover Park. Willie Galicia, the opportunistic linebacker with his third fumble recovery of the season. I don't know if they're going to win the game, but he's certainly got a secret on his red zone defense. He's doing a good, great job. This ball might not, maybe you shouldn't pitch this ball. Just as he's about to pitch it, he's grabbed in the shirt, and the ball goes errant and recovered, as we know, by Dover. Intended for Riccardi, but Willie Galicia in on the fumble recovery. Jermaine Thompson, and he's stopped by Riccardi, the Hornet linebacker, snuffing out Jermaine Thompson for no gain. Outstanding job on defense there. Reading Bobby Riccardi, he's terrific. Calls the signals, he's the master controller, as John Liberato calls his tri-captain. 5'8", 180 pounds senior, Bobby Riccardi. Most defenses, uh, defensive coaches teach against the wing tee, key the triangle, the fullback and the two guards. They take you to the football, and that was an exact example of it. Key the guards, they pulled left, they filled, and the play was stopped cold. And for the most part, Hanover Park can mix it up offensively. We'll see what Dover can do here. An important play, an important series for the Tigers. Sokola to complete Wilfong. Travis Wilfong.
terrific job at nose tackle in on the stop with Wesley Underwood thrown for a loss. Nichols and Kevin Castillo both are in there too, just doing a bang up job. Kevin Costabos is Dad Barry is the head coach at Washung Hills. Dover's 10th possession, all in their own territory today. Furthest penetration down to the 48 of Hanover Park. 6.19 to go, second and 12, and a loss on that play on the far flight by Costabos to Nichols. Deflected up in the air, but caught by Hernio. Hernio dives forward and dragged down. Might have picked up a couple of yards. A couple of yards. They've used that play before. That's that, that double receiver quick screen. Just makes it three steps drop. Just want to give a plug again to Mike Hernio's dad, Joe, a maintenance supervisor, technician over Cablevision Morris, who does a great job. We'll see it again. Two step drop. He just throws the ball. It's actually tipped in the air. You see the blocker come back, the other receiver, number nine, to make the play on the cornerback. You know, Steve, coaches have an expression. Offense scores, defense wins, and both, both teams have really played outstanding defense today. Third and 11, Dover still has its three timeouts remaining as the clock continues to roll. 522 remaining in the fourth quarter. Sakola under pressure. Sakola is hit and dropped. Nichols for nose tackle. Bobby Nichols has had himself quite an afternoon. You know, Coach, sometimes teams, uh, discretion's the better part of Valley. He's thrown three interceptions in the third quarter. That time he had the shot to throw it. I think he did the smart thing. He pulled it down, and unfortunately, he paid the price for it. Boy, look at the penetration. Here comes 18. What a hit. And then right, right here, here comes number two. Whoa, what a hit. What an outstanding hit. hit. Augusto Ramos, five yards deep in his end zone. Good protectors block. Chasing after it. It appears the Hornets, yes, they recovered for a touchdown. Number 19, I think, Steve, I'm not sure. Well, 18. no, it isn't. It is Andy Dettori with a recovery. Relaford was right around him. Tim Relaford, Andy Dettori, and Dettori with the recovery. And a hit of a part. Yeah. I didn't think it was blocked either. I thought he kicked it into the back of his own offensive player. The hands were up, but he did kick it in the back of his own player. And what a break. The Hornets take a 12 nothing lead. Scoreboard doesn't say that, but let's send it down to Jimmy Cavallo. Jimmy? Well, Steve, you know the Hanover Park Spirit Squad, their defensive chance really have pulled through. And Pam Mayanza, you're the captain of this squad. I know Halloween today, homecoming. What kind of festive things did you have in store for the fans? Well, um, when we came in today, uh, we made the football players goodie bags along with the coaches and the coach's son, just as a nice little Halloween present. And me and the captain and Miss Warren, our, our other coach, um, helped us surprise our squad by giving them uh, goodie bags, and we wore masks when we came out on the field. Just some fun Halloween stuff. Any truth you guys are going to trick or treat in your uh, cheerleading outfits after this game? <laughs> no, we're not allowed to. <laughs> All right, now listen, we worked it out. It's the, it's the Cable Vision Game of the Week cheer. Here we go, Pam. Take it away. You can't spread it out any more than this. You're from 
sideline to sideline. Quarterback just makes a little play action fake. Throws right over here in the flat. Now watch. As a, he catches this ball, there's two receivers in front of him doing the blocking. A great second effort by who else? Paul Block. You know, it's really fitting, Dale. Defensive efforts have done it many times for Hanover Park. Let's take a look Here's again here. Here's the punt that gets blocked. He actually kicks it right into the back of his own player. But the reason for that is the penetration by the by the defensive charge of their line. And you see the players, Relaford and Dettori, chasing after it. Number 18, Dettori to the right. You'll see Dettori will get to the football just ahead of Wesley Underwood for the touchdown. That's a heartbreaker for Dover. And the Hornets to kick off with a 14 to nothing lead. And this game now well in hand for Hanover Park. Onside kick. Ball's loose, still loose, recovered by the Hornets. Bobby Nichols. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? <laughs> I think you have to give Bobby Nichols a game ball, that's for sure. My gosh, he has played some football game. This is a perfect onside kick. The ball bounces right up over the, the, the down lineman's, uh, or the front lineman's position, and it's recovered. Unfortunately, Dover's had very, very little offense in the second half. It's been a tough stretch for Dover, which began the season 3-0, and but has lost two of its last three, now looking at perhaps three of its last four. Handoff, Volani with a escaping hole off the right side for eight yards inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line. Outstanding belly play. Great block by Mike Prince right in front of him. Actually, Mike Prince playing the left guard gets downfield and takes the linebacker out. Super job. Prince, who had been a uh, running back earlier in the season. In fact, he switched his jersey from 26 to 70 earlier in the year. And they're going to bring this one back. against the Hornets. Personal foul. Looks like a personal foul against Hanover Park. So it'll be first and 18 back at the 42-yard line. And that's an unusual, I guess it's 15 yards from the point of the infraction. Generally, that'll be a 15-yard penalty from the start of the play. Interesting. Not sure what he called it for. Volani. And the fullback bowls forward. That's a belly to the opposite side. Just reverse pivot, give it to him. He runs the hole between guard and tackle, which means that Kevin Cuspibo, Mike Prince, and Rocco Scaniello are doing their job up front. Five yards down to the 37. It'll be second and 11. More importantly, the clock continues to move. 3.50 left in the game, and the Hanover Park Hornets looking to improve to 6-1 and one on the season with a 14 to nothing lead. Navalis on the option. He's been very adept at this. And Navalis close to a first down. He's just, you want, just what you want in a wing T quarterback. Capable passer, outstanding runner, and most importantly, I think, an excellent leader. He's only a junior. Came in completing 40 of 66 passes. He's just the option off the belly fake. He just, there's nobody to pitch to out there. He just keeps the ball, just a keeper. But look at that second effort. Leaves his feet and gets another two yards. Just on Hart and drive. Navalis, nine carries for 51 yards this afternoon. First and 10 at the 25. Balani. Balani inside the 20, down to the 17. And they're getting some nice yardage off that right side now, Dale Abling. With a real good pullback. Solani following Sean Atkinson and Frank DiMarzio, Tom Delani, just doing a great job. They've controlled the line of scrimmage all day, the Hanover Park offensive line. Pick up six yards on the play, ball at the 19, and Hanover Park, as they've done for most of the game, owning field position and controlling the football. They had it for virtually the entire second half outside of a couple of series for the Dover Tigers. It's an all Hanover Park 
both of them. Second half, Dover's been on defense so much, and after a while, it just wears you down. They have a lot. They have a lot of two-way players. Volani, 15 for 44 here today. Got a lot of tough yardage. Got some nice runs here in the closing moments. Well, Next week, Hanover Park has a very Carolina tough game. 14. They'll bring in portable life Virginia to play the West Essex tonight. The Knights with five and one entering the weekend. State, While the Dover Tigers will be at Parsippany. North Carolina State, 38, When you look ahead in this beautiful North afternoon, North next week in our TV game, Northern Highlands at Indian Hill. More viewers on Saturday night at 7 and Bergen for Sage viewers 8 o'clock on Saturday night. Bolani this time is brought down for a loss. That's Good Bolani penetration. Javon Latham. Well, we mentioned his name a lot today, and uh, even though Dover is down 14 to nothing, they don't quit on defense. They've stuck their head in there the whole day. I think they have some total yardage stats. 247 yards to 112. So more than a 2-1 to one advantage for the Hornets. The remaining schedule for the Dover Tigers, who will fall to 4-3 and three at Parsippany. That's an awfully tough game. The Redskins are 5-1 and one entering the weekend. Then perhaps the Group 2 playoffs, which they could even make it 4-4, four and four, depending on how other teams do. And then the Mendham game on the 20th. Now, that has an asterisk there because that game could be moved to the 27th if Dover is still in the playoffs after the first round on the 14th. And Hanover Park, an awfully tough game with West Essex. Portable lights here next Saturday night, and then the Group 2 playoffs on the 14th for sure, and then at Parsippany, that game also could be moved to the 27th, depending on playoff results. Hanover Park, in this quarter, nothing. 9 minutes, 29 seconds, they've had the ball virtually the entire period. Yeah, they've controlled the second half completely. Bobby Riccardi, Bobby Riccardi with a ball carrier. on third and six, set up a fourth down. As much as they'd like to score here, Steve, I think more importantly, they just want to run the clock out and get that two minutes off there. <laughs> Dover with a timeout. They still have two remaining. You check that. That is Dover's last timeout. So Dover is out of timeouts. Two left for Hanover Park with 221 remaining. 14 to nothing. I want to thank our statistician Bill Bromberg for his work here today. Our director Lamont Richardson, your Cablevision North Jersey High School game of the week. Next week attends Northern Highlands and Indian Hills, and today it's been all Hornets controlling the football. You look at the standings in the Iron Hills Conference Hills Division. And Parsippany Hills leading the pack at 6-0. Perfect year for Phil Longo and company entering this weekend. Hanover Park, Parsippany, and West Essex all tied for second place. Fourth down and four. Novalis looking downfield. End zone. Incomplete. Intended for Riccardi. Was Riccardi open before he threw that ball? Boy, oh boy, he had about five seconds where there was nobody within five yards of him. Fortunately for Dover, when the ball got there, there was a defender right out of him. That gives the ball back to Dover. And the Hanover Park fans are quite happy with what has transpired here this afternoon. This is just a rollout pass again for Jesse Navalis. He has good protection up front. Lots of time to throw the football. Sets his feet, squares his shoulders. And again, by the time the ball gets there, there's two white shirts to make the pick. Dover, Sokola pitches, and we'll have another pass from Wilfong, perhaps complete to the offensive guard. That is an illegal, ineligible receiver. And a flag thrown. Ruben Doster caught the football. Now, Ruben's a heck of a player, but uh, he's not supposed to be catching the ball on that play. No. Maybe on defense he catches him, but not on all. He has an interception here today for Dover. Outstanding two-way lineman. Dover's 11th possession. And their average start has been at their own 19-yard line. Remember, they did not get past midfield until the second half. 
Field position football. Wing T football. That's what it's all about. Keep the other team at bay. Make them go the long way. The ball back to the six yard line. 203 remaining. Stay tuned for our post game. Jimmy Cavallo will try to have Coach John Liberato and one of the triumphant Hornets. Second and 24, pass in the flat to Underwood. And he's brought down at the 17-yard line. Good open field tackle by Mike Enderley. Again, this is what we call a quick screen. You have two wide outs to one side, and the quarterback just hits one of them, and the other one serves as a blocker. Nice reception, and you'll see the other one right there making a block. Nice tackle there. Good tackle in the open field. That's a difficult thing to do. Ball snap. The quarterback just threw it down to stop the clock. Keep that clock from moving much more. Dover in a position where they could almost not come back from down two touchdowns with the lack of field position they've had all day long. And really the inability to move the football at crucial points down 14 to nothing with 136 left in the final 96 seconds. We'll count down until Hanover Park improves to six and one and Dover falls to four and three. Double wideouts to the far side. Sokola under immense pressure. Ball thrown up for the taking, almost intercepted by Relaford. Incomplete. Well, this is a really spread formation. Split end to the right, wide. Two wide outs to the left, and unfortunately, maybe a ball that should not have been thrown. Protection breaks down, and this kid's played a great game, though. He's, a, he's, a, he's got a lot of heart. I think he's going to be a real good quarterback next year for the Dover Tigers. Unfortunately, this one maybe he should have kept. Well, the Hanover Park Hornets will probably just try to run out clock here. 127 left. Handoff Riccardi, he trips up. Nice penetration that time by Kyle Krug, who's just a sophomore, 5'10", 170 pound linebacker. If you look in there now, Steve, you'll see some clean white jerseys, some new ones from Dover. Krug is one of them that just came into the ball game. And there go some first teamers for Hanover Park to the sideline. Although Jesse Navalis remains in at quarterback. For just under a minute, 14 to nothing. Hanover Park. Mike Enderley, the ball. That time Enderley got the call. Mike Enderley. 5'9", 163 pound junior halfback. Good penetration there by three new clean white jerseys. I didn't get all their numbers from Dover, but good chance get some of the other players in the ball game, let them get some playing time. Third and 12, and that might be the last play. 22 seconds, clock moving. It's been a defensive battle, but finally Hanover Park gets over the hump. The recovery in the end zone of a punt that hit off a Dover player. Put the finishing touches on it. Final play here, Volani gets the call. Down to the 13-yard line. Two seconds, one second, and that'll do it. The Hanover Park Hornets have picked up victory number six of the 1998 campaign with a convincing 14 to nothing victory over the Dover Tigers who fall to four and three on the year. A real good football game, Steve. Couldn't have had a nicer Halloween day. Of course, Dover's got to be disappointed, but uh, they should be very proud of their defense. They made Hanover Park work for every single one of those 14 points. And again, the play action, the varied offense for Hanover Park. Very impressive, Dale Abling. Jesse Navalis, the quarterback, mixing the pass in the run very effectively. Matt Villani, Anthony Capari, Bob Riccardi, all capable running backs. And you put in receivers, Rocco Scaniello had a couple of key receptions in the game, and Bobby Nichols as well. When we come back, we'll have Coach Liberato and a play.